Hey people, this is Andrew Hogue here, of course, for andrewhogue.com, Australia's only dedicated 24-7 rock metal radio station and drummer for Contrive. You are listening to Collision on Voice FM. Hello. Hi, Andrew. It's hey, Ken, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Not too bad, just dealing with this shitty cold uh, Melbourne weather that doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. Oh, isn't the sun out there today? Oh, yeah, but it doesn't really cut through on a warmer sense compared to other states, but that's just the way it rolls. Yeah. So, well, the album was released on the 1st of September, so it's been out 20 days. Now, how's everything been going since the actual release of Slow Dissolve? Oh, it's just been a huge, uh, I guess, sigh of relief. I mean, it's something we didn't think we'd ever get finished. I mean, you know, tragedy struck midway through the recording of the album in 2015 when Paul and I lost our dad suddenly, and anything like that's going to completely turn your world upside down. It completely changes your family dynamic forever, and no one's taught that kind of feeling and emotion at all. So for Paul and I, we were just froze, like, what the hell do you do? And... uh yeah, we weren't just sure. It was probably the furthest thing from our minds trying to get the album finished and stuff because you're just dealing with one of the worst things you ever get to deal with in your life. And um, yeah, we just put it on on pause indefinitely and and uh, slowly but surely, you know, we always know that Dad encouraged us to to follow what we love doing, and that's when we said, all right, let's let's just try and pick up the pieces and see if we can get this thing done. And then during that time, we noticed Tim, our bassist, had kind of moved back a bit from you know, his commitments to the band, which we understood because, you know, he's got a young family now and we all know that that changes a lot of things too for certain, I guess, things you, you know, you, you, you were once doing. It just takes a different priority. And we sort of had a chat with him and sort of said, you know, I think we're getting in the way of, of your sort of new beginnings with your life. And he sort of said, well, I feel like I'm getting in the way of this for us. And it was kind of a win-win, lose-lose, you know. We get to continue doing the band stuff and Tim continues to spend time with his family and, and start his sort of new life. So that's when we ended up um, deciding to end up being a two-piece. So a lot of things happened, I guess, in the last two years leading up to finally getting the album done. And, yeah, like I said, it's just a huge sigh of relief that it's, it's finished, it's out there, and surprisingly the reviews have been overwhelmingly good. We're kind of used to having a bit of a, a, a jab from, from many of the media over the years of our career. It's just not everyone gets it or digs it or whatnot. So we were kind of prepared for that. As soon as the first review come in, it's like, all right, what, what are we going to cop this time? Because we're just kind of used to that, you know? Mm. And you sort of read the first one, you're like, wow, that was really cool. And then the next review comes in, wow, that's just amazing. Like, wow, people are, are getting this. It's it's a shock in a lot of ways for us, but uh, we're obviously wrapped about it. I mean, it's nice when someone likes what you do as much as you like it yourself, but, uh, yeah, to sort of end the rant here, it's definitely a sigh of relief that the album's out, and um, now the hard work starts to let people know more about it, start doing more shows and, and things like that. Yeah, well, I do want to actually ask when you lost your bass player, there was no consideration about finding another bass player? Uh, well, I had to chat with Paul about it. Like, he, you know, as soon as Tim sort of said, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting harder, you know, and we sort of said, we can tell. Paul and I sort of sat down and said, oh, you know, who are we going to get? And we thought, great, we're going to go through the hole. Who's available? Do we find someone that's in another band that's done it before? Or do you find a younger player that's hungry, but then their ego is going to be off the charts? And then <laughs> there's so many factors to consider when you're playing a band with people. You've got to work around life schedules because obviously it's not a full-time thing and then there's personality then there's you know performance abilities uh organization uh good gear as well i mean there's so many factors and paul and i are pretty fickle in so many areas of of, of running this this band slash business uh you really got to find the right fit i mean there's some amazing players out there but some of them are just really average people in in the personality sense and you really got to make sure that it's going to work or it won't i know dozens of people are playing bands who hate each other but they still do it and i mm. can't imagine doing something like that because eventually something's going to give and so i said to paul obviously we've been running sort of backing track stuff for the last couple of years anyway on our previous releases with keyboards i've been triggering samples as well and i just thought music's changed so much the last bunch of years that uh I think it's become so open to try anything. I mean, I, I saw a one-piece death metal band uh, a couple of months back, I think, on the Black Dahlia to a putrid pile. It was just this mm. guy from America just playing to an iPod. And it was just ridiculous, but so cool at the same time. 
but people were into it. No one was up the back going, oh, he needs a drummer, he needs a bass player. No. People were happy just to see it, and they saw something different. And I figured that, wow, there's, you know, people that just want to see good music, whether it's done by one person or a 10-piece band. And I said to Paul, why don't we just do the two-piece thing? You know, we'll run Tim's bass tracks. They're all, that's still his work. It's still his live playing. You know, let, let's try something different. We're twins. There's not many two-piece sort of metal bands that have twin brothers in the group that are just a two-piece. And I thought, you know, there's a different angle here as well. And instead of, you know, me sitting up the back on the kit and all up the front, let's play side by side and really have a different visual aspect to it. Because I think today, as I mentioned, music's changed so much in, in so many different levels, uh, you know, you got to be smart about it and, and also uh, strategic. And, and it's also a visual too. So I said to Paul, let's just give it a go. And he was like, okay. So first we sort of started, you know, figuring out the technical aspects of how it's all going to work because we don't use a laptop live. And um, I sort of jumped into that technical uh, rabbit hole and sort of went through all that sort of stuff of figuring out gear and what, what would work and create the less problems because I hear a lot of bands who use a lot of technical gear live and can have complete disaster moments and things like that and um, luckily we haven't really had any problems at all uh, so yeah he sort of was happy to run with it and now it just feels so normal I can't no disrespect to Tim of course because he's still technically heard live he's just not there on stage or anything like that but it, I just think I can't imagine having another member in the band I think it just it works for us I mm. mean I haven't really had many people come up now because we did our first live show a couple of weeks back uh, have said, oh, you know, you need a bass player. People just said, man, it sounded great. It looks great. I get the two-piece thing, and that's really cool to hear. So for us, yeah, there was not There was a brief consideration of who do we get, and then I just went, nah. <laughs> so mm. it's kind of worked out so far, and, and like I said, uh, I think people are accepting of all forms of different types of bands today. Yeah, and I was going to say about the album too and the reaction you've been getting, it is, it's unexpected, it's like you think you're putting a heavy metal album on but this album is just so many different aspects and layers to it and like even like The Human Game, that song is amazing, it, it's just so different. What were you thinking when you were putting this album together, what was the concept going on in your head? We don't all, I mean, pardon the pun, we don't contrive what we do. We just we just write what makes us feel good. I mean, a lot of bands say that, but I think after a while they get trapped in a genre style and go, oh, we can't change our sound because we've got a following now and then, you know, if we change, they'll leave. We've never done that. We've never written any sort of style or fads or anything like that. I think we've always just stood alone and done our own thing and sometimes that's probably been a bit of a, a bit detrimental to the group because a lot of people, oh, I don't really get it or it's a bit too different. I've always told people in this sort of analogy that it's like food. People complain about eating the same stuff, yet they're not going to try something different on the menu because it's different. Hmm. I'm not saying that we're the most unique, different band out there. We're definitely not. I think we're rather easy to adapt to, I think. But I also believe that we're one of those bands you just won't get on the first listen because... Uh, like I said, people are getting a little bit lazier today with the amount of hybrid styles of metal that, oh, yeah, you guys are cool, you sound like Lamb of God. Oh, yeah, you guys are brutal, you sound like Cannibal Corpse. Awesome, yeah, I'm into it. They don't think about it because they already know where what, what box it's going to get put in. Whereas us, I mean, I've noticed most of the reviews, rarely any of them have said we sound like this band. Most of the time, there's not a lot of, of references at all. It's just... These guys are just doing their own thing, and that's what we're wrapped about, That especially those who are reviewing it have taken the time to really sit there and listen to it as the band and the album as opposed to, oh, what could I write in this review? Cross between meets this with a little bit of that and blah, 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 because that's what most people do just to give people a, an indication of what they might hear. Mm. But uh, I'm loving the fact that um, we're not really completely put in a pigeonhole, but um, we we just sort of do what's going to feel right. And uh, pardon the cliche, dare to be different. That's just what we do. Uh, and like I said, it's good that more people are starting to really give it a bit more time. And I usually tell friends, hey man, you know, check out the album if you get a chance and try and listen to it without distraction because you will realise there's a lot more going on than just an initial listen of, oh yeah, it's pretty heavy, it's pretty melodic, it's pretty dynamic. Oh yeah, cool, done. Um, you know, I had a mate of mine who is pretty, you know, fickle about his music and uh, he said it's actually one of those albums that you would put on before you go to bed or on a plane where you're not distracted. 
it's not background music. Uh, like I said, I, I think more people would get more out of it if they gave it the time. And that's the biggest factor that we're all having trouble with today as humans is time and competing with people's attention spans and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, we just try to encourage people to actually give it a chance. Don't write it off after one listen or one song because um, you'll find there's a lot more depth to it. And that's, that's kind of where we come from, I guess. You know, Tim used to say it, we're a thinking man's band. Uh, we like to write about things a little bit more deep and emotional and, and thought-provoking, and especially songs, as you mentioned, like The Human Game. It, um, it's just something that uh, we just want to address and talk about, and and that's definitely one of the songs that a lot of people have sort of commented on, and, and that's great because it shows that they actually have paid attention to really digesting it and listening to it instead of uh, a quick skim through and uh, on to the next 20 albums that are, are coming out in the next week. You know, there's just so much out there. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's that time of the year, isn't it? But I also know what your mate means because the album kind of takes you on a journey of highs and I don't want to say lows, but um, yep. it's not all metal the whole way through. Um, it's almost like it's heavy metal wrapped in meditation music or something. You've got It's got a meditative feel throughout the album. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I think for us, it's, dynamics are really important. I, I, like I said, we don't contrive, pardon the pun, our, our sound. We just, sometimes Paul would just question, oh, what are we like? Or what are we about? Or what are we, I go, just let it be what it is. Stop dissecting it like someone else is going to do that. Let, that's their job, you know. If, if, if this part wants to take you there and that that feels good, we'll, we'll play that section. We'll do that part, you know. Because there were times he would sort of dissect it all as well and, oh, I don't know, people are going to get it. I'm like, stuff them, you know, as long as you get it. Because that's the thing. People don't understand when you play music, it is a, a, an emotional release, a cathartic release. You do it for whatever reason you do it for and it generally is a, a form of expression. Uh, it's just up to you how deep you want to express how you feel some people do it abrasively and they play brutal extreme music and stand there concrete shoes and but i'm sure they're feeling something at that time they might not be showing it on the physical sense whereas you get the player to jump around and that's their release you know and afterwards they're like yeah that was full on you know they're letting their emotions out that way it's completely up to the individual and also the band of, of how you know you want to express what you play but uh for us you know, we're, we're quite a emotional thinking people and I think a lot of the time it does dictate what you represent musically and, and I think that we've kind of really got where we're at now musically. I, I think, you know, there's things that really piss us off and there's aggressive sections of the film, uh, of the, um, the songs and then there's sections, like you said, that are a bit sort of meditative that, I mean, I'm, I'm the same when I'm playing it, when there's a, a really heavy part and, you know, you're giving it your all and then the slow part kicks in, I kind of just tell my mind relax because now this is a time to go with that part of the section of the song and meditate on it so to speak and then you sort of ramp it up again so I like the journey myself personally playing this stuff because it does take you to different places and things like that and, and yeah we never we never plan this and I, like I said we have no idea what the next record is going to sound like until we start sitting down and and writing it and, and sometimes we'll stew over a 10 second part for a few hours jamming it and until you get it right and and, um, yeah, we're definitely going to be one of these bands that takes our time, but not like Tool. We're going to try and put out another record a little bit sooner than later, you know. I don't want it to take as long as this. Yeah. Well, you said you did a live show a few weeks back. What about doing any sort of touring? Yeah, well, that's the plan. I mean, that live show, that was more of a celebration. Like I said, it's taken a, a lot of, uh, you know, mental energy and emotion to sort of get back to where we belong and back to playing and putting the album out so Paul and I decided let's just book a, a, a sort of a celebratory gig just us no no other bands just a local venue the workers club really good place in Fitzroy and we decided you know all right let's just invite a bunch of friends and whoever else might be interested and we're just going to play the whole album in full which is what we do now in rehearsal we just play from start to finish I think we I think the album flows really well uh, in its order and then after the gig we'll just play the album over the PA while people can have a few drinks on us and uh, hang out and it was great the event was really cool it was nerve-wracking we hadn't played live for over three years plus the first sort of official live show was a two-piece was like wow well how's it going to go all these sort of things come into play when it comes to doing something haven't done for a while and the live feeling is kind of a feeling you don't get used to when you don't do it all the time so 
you know, Santex great, you're comfortable, and all of a sudden when people start rocking in, it's like, oh, okay, nerves kick in, it mm-hmm. happens, it's natural. But it went down really well. We were just surprised by friends' reactions. I mean, friends can be your worst critics most of the time because sometimes it's coming from a place of their own frustrations of, oh, no, that part was crap, and at the same time, they'd sort of say it how it is, and it's not always the feedback you want, but the yeah, majority of friends just said, wow, this, that was really cool, and, and Tim, our former bass player, he came along as well, and he just said, mate, it was amazing, it was kind of surreal, standing there, listening to songs that he played on the album with, and hearing his own bass lines coming through the PA, yet he's just standing in the crowd watching, <laughs> he said it was, it was quite surreal, but he said it itself, it, it looked great, and the whole visual aspect as well, and he said he really, really gets it, and dug it and again you know we'll, we'll still consider you know tim doing stuff uh, studio wise i mean there's no bad blood at all i mean i, I miss the guy he's always a, a, a sort of a, a third brother to us in the band and we're still you know friends and things like that so yeah he may uh crop up on the next record just you know doing bass in the studio wise but as far as touring our plan uh, we're locking in a show i think next month and just going to start getting out and playing gigs i think for us because this record has a lot more prog sort of leanings there's definitely a lot more proggier bands we'd like to start playing with and hopefully also we're still trying to confirm it all to do a couple of shows in indonesia next month as well i I think for us we want to really get out and tour abroad i mean we've done plenty of touring in this country over the years and you know sad to say australia i don't think has ever really gotten us maybe it's starting to change like i said the reviews are coming through amazingly in positive and starting to think that maybe people might give us a chance this time around and maybe go to a, a show or, or something like that. And you can only try. I mean, you've got to get out there and, and, and tread the boards and whatnot. But uh, for us, we definitely want to try and hit Europe or even the States and, and other, other countries outside of Australia. I think that, um, you know, there might be a, a better, better opportunity there and possibly less bias as well. A lot of people know who we are. They also know what we do outside of the band as well. So they can have that sort of angle there that might not always be positive and... Um, you know, you want to just get up there and be judged on your musical output instead of, oh, that's that radio guy, oh, that's those twins or whatever. Mm. You know, you just sort of, that gets thrown around a little bit as well and um, you want people to just judge you on your musical output as a uh, as a band. So touring, yeah, we'll, we'll be a bit more strategic about it here and, and stuff like that and um, see which, um, you know, bands we can play with and see how it all rolls. Yeah. Can I ask, actually, Devin Townsend mixed your last album for you. Yep. With this album, who did the producing and mixing in that? It was actually Dave Young. He was He's the guitarist in Devin's band, and oh. uh, he's got his own production company with his brother Mike, and he did a stellar job. Well, they both did a stellar job, I think, on this record. I mean, obviously, you in the same boat as myself in the radio land, we get sent so much music, but mm. I... I'm noticing so many more bands are over-compressing their music. Uh, they're just mastering it to the brink, so it's so loud. And, yeah, it gets your attention for a couple of minutes and then you get, you know, census fatigue, which people aren't really totally aware of. Uh, I always tell people, just Google loudness wars and you understand a bit more about why albums just sound so loud as opposed to, you know, keeping its original dynamic range. I know it sounds like audio nerd talk, but it's I've noticed it in the last decade that albums are just getting sounding worse i mean you're hearing all these bands with amazing polished productions but it's they're so loud and that's all down to the mastering i mean metallica was a perfect example of how to poorly master a record death magnetic was so brick walled as the term goes uh, it's unlistenable at least to my ears and a lot of people just aren't aware of it they hear it yeah it sounds cool it sounds heavy i go oh, just turn up a little bit more and then it just goes to crap and a lot of people just aren't aware that that's what's happening with, with certain aspects of music. So when we went into the sort of mix and the production side of things with Dave, we really wanted to make sure that this is an album that breathes well, doesn't bleed your ears when you turn it up, because a lot of people want to turn up music, listen to it loud, it's rocking, blah, blah, blah. But there are some albums that you just crank and it hurts, and you go, ouch, you know, where's the bass gone? Where's the kick drum? I can't hear anything except a, a, a wall of, of mud. It really also depends on the band. If, if it's more sort of abrasive metal, death metal, thrash and whatever, a lot of instrumentation is competing for space. So if guitars aren't loud enough, then the drums are going to come up. And then, oh, hang on, the vocals aren't loud enough. Let's pump that up. And that's the competition that's happening in, as they call it, the loudness wars. They're trying to compete for sort of headroom within the, the, the mix itself. And because our songs, like I said, have a lot of dynamic up and down, we really told Dave, you know, we want it to be 
a, a really nice, comfortable listen uh, where mm. you can crank it and the parts that are calm sound amazing and the heavy parts are kicking still sound great instead of, ooh, it's bleeding in my ears a bit. I know I sound like a bit of an audio nerd here, but um, <laughs> it's something that uh, we were really mindful of going into this and also the mastering we did it as well. And Dave and, and Mike totally got that. So that, that really helped because for us, we're listeners to, even though we've played on the album, we want to listen back to it and just go, wow, that was a really good album. It sounds great. There's nothing wrong with indulging in your own art, but you don't want to listen back and go, oh, yeah, we kind of got it wrong then. We thought we had it right, but oh, God, it sounds terrible. Hmm. And every artist is going to pick forward their own works down the track, obviously, but um, more on the technical aspect, we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to sound like one of these other albums that are just so loud and heavy and abrasive and just damaging your your, your, uh, your ear senses. So yeah, Google the loudness wars, people. You'll um, you'd be quite shocked and you'll probably learn a little bit more of why your favourite band doesn't sound as good as they used to, even though they've got amazing productions in the studio and using all the latest plugins. Mastering is killing a lot of music today and that's just a sad thing because there's so many good bands out there now. There's so many good players. There's so much great music but the mastering is what's destroying it. So how's that mm. for an audio nerd rant? <laughs> Uh, can I ask quickly, do you have a favourite track on the album? It's a good question. Uh, wow, well, those are good songs. Jeez, I just I enjoy playing them all because, like I said, it's kind of a, a journey in so many ways. I think probably Below the Line or Slow Dissolve, I'm liking a lot more. Uh, God, what else? Human Game. I don't know. There's, there's not one on the album where it's like, oh, this part, oh, this song. You kind of just get into it. I don't know. I love Your Owned as well. The faster songs are the harder ones for me because you try and play with intensity when you play fast. The faster you play, the lighter you've got to play because it's hard to hit at a consistent pace or power and, and keep up the tempo. So those the sort of faster songs are like, all right, let's just you know slam it and try and maintain the dynamic and the power that, that's output. Um, Connect Dead I like as well. The message is really, really prominent for us. The video clip was pretty interesting and fun to make as well. I let you choose, to be honest, because I'm sure you've got a couple of uh, good ones you like. But oh, I'm, I mean, I don't. I, th- I think it's all killer, no filler. I mean, ask me in six months, I might just go, yeah, I'm kind of over that song. But right now, I, I just dig them all because I think they're all completely different from each other, and that's kind of how we've always written songs. Not sort of replicating track one; it's going to sound like track four uh, at all. Uh, so yeah, that's a hard one to pick, to be honest. Well, it is actually because there's so many different styles of track on the album. And as far as you having a favourite, if you're going to be playing these tracks and that live, then it should be an evolving thing that your favourites change as you go along. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is there something you'd like to say to your fans to get them to go and check out the album Slow Dissolve? Well, if they're fans already, they hopefully would have checked it out by now. But if not, well, yeah, just... uh if you're after something a little bit different, if you're a little bit bored of, of what you're sort of listening to, and that's, that does happen, there's so much music out there and you're, you're after something that has a little bit more scope and depth and, and uh, a unique sound about it, just, yeah, check out the new record, Slow Dissolve. Just go to contrive.com.au and all the uh, infos there and where you can listen to it. It's all on normal digital platforms. We're also pressed up some limited physical copies as well that we can uh, post on out. And, yeah, but just an album that will... Um, you know, you, you you might not get in the first listen or the second. And I always believe that those kind of albums are the ones that stay with you the longest. Even when I get a bit impatient, I hear an album go, yeah, it sounds okay, but there's something that is a bit unsettling. I listen to that feeling because I go, you know what, there's something here that's, that's, that's making me think whether or not I might like an album or not at the time. I don't sort of, oh, didn't, I didn't get it straight away, I'm going to dismiss it, because that's a problem that happens today. A lot of people's attention spans are so much shorter that if they don't get it then and there, delete, next, they don't have patience. And that's the problem with, I think, society. There's that, you know, hence the, the lyrics of some of these songs on the album, the immediate age, everyone wants everything now. And if they don't get it, they go to the next thing. Impatience, we're all guilty of it because... We've got so much information coming at us, so many options, and uh, if it doesn't work next, if, if you know an app's not loading, delete, people just don't have patience, and we're all guilty of it. You know, I'm the same, working in the computer age for years, and bang, something doesn't work, damn, reboot, uh, just you know, come back to it, because it's that whole next, next, keep your own momentum going of trying to fit in more stuff, but I think for us, we're one of those bands, I think that... Uh, 
you know, give it time, uh, and I think you'll you'll be well rewarded with uh, really good music that's honest and integral, and and hopefully that uh, will be an album that will sort of stick with you for a while until the next one comes out. So how's that for the hard sell? Yeah, no, awesome. I was going to say to people too to go and check you out at contrive.com.au and as you said, everything's there if they want to find the video and how to buy the music and that. And on Facebook, you are Contrive Official on Facebook, definitely. Yep. And um, no, it is, I think actually this album is going to have a bigger impact than you realise. I think this is quite a special album, actually. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, it's Still early days, obviously, because we've got to start getting out there and letting people know about it because, as we mentioned, attention spans are a lot quicker. An album can come out and be forgotten in two weeks. If you don't sort of build momentum, people just move forward because there's about 50 other bands trying to compete with your mind space as well. And it doesn't matter how good your album is. If you haven't got someone's attention at a certain time, they've moved on to something else. Uh, and that's why you're seeing so many bands putting out so many things every day doing something because we're just competing with attention and information. You know, we're always looking, we always think we're looking for something different, and um, when we see the same stuff, sometimes we stick with that, sometimes we just skim over it. It always mm-hmm. depends on what, what your brain wants at that time. It's it's a pretty, pretty crazy world we're in right now, and God help what we're going to be in 10 years' time considering how much technology is advancing and AI coming into play and stuff. Don't get me started on this sort of No, rant. but in but, 10 um, years' time, what is going to have happened is Contrive are going to be onto their third new album. Fourth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, the, not the next one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, this one was definitely well worth the wait. Slow Dissolve is available now. And I'll tell people too that they can hear you and catch up with you anytime they want if they go to andrewhogue.com and tune into your heavy metal radio station. Awesome. And you've got quite a Thank few you, shows it's on been there. It's a so. privilege to talk to you again. Thank you. It's always great to catch up. And it is an amazing album. I look forward to seeing what actually happens for you guys from this album. We end up touring and stuff like that. Look forward to it. Yeah, well, that's the plan. Just uh, like I said, you know, the hard work starts once it's out rather than beforehand, even though everyone thinks that's the hardest part. Writing music, getting it all done, that sort of does happen. But then it's just getting out there again. This is where... This, yeah, like I said, this is where the hard work now starts, just to sort of get in people's faces and let them know that we still exist or we're a band that you haven't heard of before and give us a go. So this is where it's like, all right, let's try and do something different and uh, see what we can uh, make of it. So, yeah, head down and uh, on with the show. I was going to say I'm looking forward to his going to Europe because I might even consider sneaking into one of the suitcases. <laughs> yeah, by all means. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, we've we've been knocking on a few doors for for European tours, and it's it's incredibly tough. You know, you're sort of letting people know we're a two piece. We don't use guitar amps. It's just drum kit, and it's only two people. Blah blah blah. And yeah, some people are oh, okay. That's interesting. Others nothing. You just got to keep knocking on doors, and hopefully, you know, opportunity presents itself. Yeah. So Europe would be great. It's just trying to get onto a tour is is what we're finding um, a, a trying thing. But like anything, it's all worth the, the long haul and you just got to keep plugging away, as they say. Awesome. Thanks so much, and you have a good day. Yeah, you too. Good to talk to you, and we'll catch up soon. Definitely. See you later. See ya. Bye.